can see here, this is a mood board that I've already created. What we'll do together is create a new one, but first I want to walk you through these parts. I've titled it up top so that it's very clear, you can see what it is. I've got a section here, this top section, that describes the color scheme that I'm going to use. Down here in the middle, I've described the type faces, type styles, and I've even applied some of the color. And then in the bottom section, which as you can see, that's the largest section, I've brought in some examples of other projects, infographics that I like and I would like to take inspiration from. So I talk a little bit about each one in these text frames. And then here I just drew something with geometric shapes that I was inspired to draw using my color scheme, but inspired by this one. I'm going to use my zoom tool. Let's see, there it is. And just drag to the right and down so you can see. Whoops, sorry about all that moving. Um, I can also type command or control negative to zoom out a little, or command or control plus to zoom in. So, and I can also press my space bar and then click and drag because that just moves things around. Those are a few really handy shortcuts. Zooming in, command or control plus, and zooming out, command or control negative. Um, and then holding this space bar to get this little hand so you can just move things around. So I'm showing my color in three ways. I show the boxes of color here. This is an analogous color scheme that I chose. I show those exact same three colors at 50% and at 20%. I'll show you how to do that when we build our own mood board, but just so you can see, let me get my selection tool and click on one. The colors were chosen up here. You can see that that one is 100%. If I click on this one, you'll see that up here I changed that to a 50. So this is 50% of that same color. Also down here, the CMYK values are shown. So I also give the CMYK values. That's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the CMYK values. To get the RGB, the red, green, blue values, I had to double click on the color and then change this menu to RGB, and that gave me the RGB values for each color. And then over here, what I did was, I simply, let me move this over, I copied a color wheel from the internet. I really like this one because it sticks out where it's primary or secondary colors. And then the mixes are in between. That's why I like this one. And then I built this, which is three quarters of a circle so that I could demonstrate exactly the analogous colors that I'm choosing. Now, as you might remember, analogous colors use up about one quarter of the color wheel. So you can see I have some greens, some medium blues, and some dark blues. That's pretty much what I'm showing here on the color wheel. If I click on this, oops, I can hover outside the edge of it with my selection tool, then click and drag to rotate this. So I could actually choose from here, I can get a really good look at any set of analogous colors. Yeah, I feel pretty clever for making that up. Yep, yep, all right. And in the middle section, these are the typefaces that I'm going to use for my first infographic. I chose them. I chose phosphate. Now, unlike you, or maybe like you, I have a pretty good knowledge of typefaces. But in your infographic, I would like for you to choose one display font. That means a font that's pretty decorative, that would not be good to put a large body of text in. Let me just demonstrate that. Look what would happen if I made this large body of text phosphate.
see it's just much harder to read. I'm going to undo that, Control Z or Command Z. So for body of text, a large paragraph of text that you need to read, I chose this font called Futura PT. I like it because it comes in this um, light. See that up there? It's a lightweight font. And here there is a medium weight. And here is a bold. So I really like Futura because it comes in uppercase and lowercase. Whereas phosphate only comes in uppercase letters. There are no lowercase letters in this display font. Um, and then this is an example of how something on my uh, infographic might look. It's what I'm thinking, right? That's what this board is for, to show what you're thinking. I might change my mind and make this the green. So I can always go to this color and choose the green. And I might uh, make the first three words bold. Who knows? I don't know what I will choose to do when I get there to making my infographic. But this board is a place for me to plan. And then down here, I just took found an internet window and I googled infographics and I looked at about a hundred different ones. And I pulled aside these three. This one I chose because I like the size and I like these geometric shapes. I really think it's a way of grouping information that's very helpful. I didn't say so, but I also like these dotted lines with this. Um, this one I chose because I really like the, it's almost monochromatic. I would call this sort of a complementary color scheme. Blue and orange are complementary colors. So this might be a monochromatic plus a complement. This color scheme is all over the place. Well, actually it might be the blue-orange range. So it could be a complementary scheme. Uh, these colors are my analogous colors that I'm choosing. And I like this infographic because I like the colors on it. But as I look at it, let me zoom out. To me, this has too much text on it. I don't like it. I, that's not how I want my infographic to be. All right, now I'm going to show you how to set your new document up just like this one.
I've plugged in the RGB values here and I just want to mention a few things. Do you see how this is actually quite hard to read? The yellow on white. It's not easy to read. And this is not easy to read either. This yellow, dark yellow, it's 100% on the light yellow. And this is not easy to read. White on yellow. So, uh, I'm going to show you how to alter these things. You just have to be very careful with yellow. It's hard to read. It's okay here. Not great, but okay, the contrast between the text and the background color. But here it's not good, here it's not good, and here it's not good. So this was the same, and I changed it to give it a gray background. I want to show you how I did that. I went to the second button up here in the control panel and holding my option or control uh, alt key click on that and here I chose shading with a background a black background tint of 40 percent you can see that right here uh, and then I also unlinked this chain and gave it an offset. Let me cancel that and show it to you again. I unlinked that chain and gave it an offset because without that offset it just reached the top of the number and it was hard to read. So there's just a few things you can do when things get hard to read. On this one I think I'll just make the color let me go back to the character panel and the font color. I think I'll just make it that orange because readability is the most important thing. More important than consistency, more important than anything. Readability. And now I'd like to separate these two. So I'm going to click on this line three times and push the letting. Oops. So I just get that even with the bottom so that there's space between the CMYK and the RGB values. Control negative to zoom out a little bit. So this is what it's looking like so far. And I have a lot to go. I'm going to select all of these and group them. And I'll push them down a little bit. Maybe I'll rotate this whole... Oops rotate this whole thing so that my color choices are more at the top. And then I'll create a text frame for the title of this. I'm going to call it Project 1, oops, 1, Mood Board. And I'll make this Arial. I always choose a very simple font, Arial Regular. And then uh, I can make this larger to fill that space. Um, I should also put the word Infographic. You can see it doesn't fit if I click on my selection tool, the red plus symbol shows me that what I've done doesn't fit. So double clicking in there again gives me my text tool. Clicking three times selects it all. So I'm going to go down a few point sizes so it fits. Correct my spelling. And maybe I'll make this bold. There. So now I'm going to create another text frame. Oops, do you see how I'm trying to draw a text frame and it won't happen? If I get my arrow tool, I can see it's because I was inside this box. If you're wondering why sometimes you can see that text frame, but when I click away from it, you can't. That has to do with my view menu. So down here, right now it's in preview mode. If I go to normal, then I'll be able to see all the boxes and my margins. So that's telling me I need to make this just a bit smaller to fit inside my margins. 
I'll kern it a little bit to make it fit. And the other thing I want to add to the color is why I'm choosing these colors. So even though I haven't uh, actually chosen an infographic, I'm just showing you how to make the mood board, you would want to have your topic selected before you choose colors and before you create your mood board. And you can email me to ask if your topic is okay. In all likelihood, I'll say yes. There are very few topics I won't approve. So I'm going to just talk about why I would choose a warm color palette. Um, you can see on the first one, the first mood board I made, I noted that I chose cool colors and analogous colors because my project is about water and I think it reflects the subject. Maybe here I'll talk about, uh, I'm just going to type here, write about why you choose these colors. In this, and I'm going to make this Arial to keep everything Arial regular, to make everything consistent. Um, it's warm and it's analogous. Um, maybe my infographic is about the sun, maybe it's about heat, maybe it's about autumn, who knows. Whatever your infographic is about, that's going to drive part of your color choices. So uh, I have one more thing to fix. I need to make this line have the same attributes as that. So I select it, go down to my paragraph menu, hold my Alt key or Option and click. I'm going to choose black for shading. And there's the shading. I think that I chose 40% on the other one. And then I unlinked this chain. You can see it all happening down there. And what did I make this? 0.025, I'm trying to remember. And then I also created it to be not column, but text width. So that should look more like the top one. Yep. Okay, now as always, file, save. And I'll name this Project 1 Mood. For now, I'm going to save it to my desktop. And now I have two other sections to add. Let me scoot all of these things up a little bit. I just selected them all. I'm just moving them up. And then I'll get my line tool and just draw. I'll hold my shift key as I draw a line. And I'll make the line black. And maybe I'll make it two point. And I'll also duplicate this line by holding my Option key and put one there. Maybe I'll bring these things in front of the line. So my next section is going to be about typography. Duplicating my line. And at this point, I'm going to choose what two fonts that I want to use for my typefaces. One will be a display or a decorative font, and the other will be a font that's very readable so that people can read what I have to say in my descriptions of the objects. I'll start by typing an uppercase alphabet. Oops, Y, W, X, Y, Z. All right, and I'll make this fit the frame a little better. I'm going to take away some of that leading and actually maybe a little smaller. So I have to find some natural breaks here. Uh, I'm going to try at H and S. Not bad, but that's a little easier. Maybe I'll get the I up there. Pretty close. So now let me make this a little bigger. 
I should have chosen the typeface first. Let me do that. Uh, maybe I will. And in this list here, you can go through the fonts that are already installed on your own computer. There's the phosphate font that I chose earlier last time. This is a good typeface. It works well. I think I will put that J on the second line just for better balance. Should I put the R on the last line? Hmm, maybe. And then here, I'm going to choose to, down here, I'm choosing to justify every line. That means to make the left side and the right side even. Then I think I can close it up a little bit. So you might choose to make yours three lines or four lines, whatever you want, however you want to do it. And then I'll copy this and change it to, uh, let's just choose Arial for now. Oh, that's Arial Black. That's not what I want. Too bold. I already have a bold font, so... Arial Regular. And IQ... Maybe if I give it a little kerning, that last line will fit. There it is. And I can move these up. I can spread them out. So this may require a little bit of tweaking. I can make a copy of this to show the lowercase. And I don't have to do it all on my own. I can choose the type menu, change case, and lowercase. So now I've got three typeface options here. Look how much longer they are. I'm just going to choose them all and lower the percent until it looks to me like they're going to fit on my board nicely. So you can see on the original board, first let me zoom in, I talk a little bit, I made a text frame to talk about the typefaces and the styles. A style is light, medium, and bold. The typeface of these three is Futura PT. The style is light, medium, and bold. And I just decorated it. I put some lines between it, and then I had some space left, so I made an example of what it might look like on my infographic. I'll dress this other one up and add some of those things, and then come back and show you how to do the bottom part. Yeah, I've finished this area here that talks about the typefaces and the type styles that I want to use. And I did a, a lot of fun experimenting. I, I wrote that I've chosen Phosphate and Arial. I wrote that I'm considering using the two hues with darker values. Remember that hue has value lesson? you can see that these two hues are a darker value than that one. So I'm using the two hues with darker values, the red and the orange text. For text, these two lines show. So the orange for the headlines, the red for the body text. And then for my yellow, I'm going to use that 40% yellow in the background. Is that 40%? It doesn't look it. Let me check. No, that's 20 yeah, 40 looks nicer. So because I've decided on solar power for my topic, this already looks a little bit like a sun. And now I just have to do this bottom section for my inspiration. I want you to know that on my desktop, I created a folder here called Project One Images. And into it, I brought some images from the internet. I did not look to see that these were royalty free. And the reason I didn't is because I'm not going to copy them. I'm just going to be inspired by them. So I'll place each of these images into this document so that um, I can use them. And one easy way to do it is just to drag it in. So there's one. To resize it, I hold Shift and control or command. And I just want to make this small enough. You can see that uh, that gray and white checkered background. They're trying to make it look like it's got a transparent background. But I'll build a little text frame beside it. And then in that text frame, I'll write 
what I like. Oops. And this should be uh, the same typeface, Arial Regular. And then let's look at the next image I picked. These are just images that influenced me. Shift command. I real oops. Shift command. You can see if I just let me get my selection tool. If I just make the box smaller, that crops it. But if if I hold shift and command, that reduces the size of it. And actually, now that I see what I've done, I like it cropped like that because you just want to get the feel. So as I look at this, this is making me rethink not using blue. I might choose to add a blue as a complement here. We'll see. What are some of the other images? Um, so one at a time, I will add these images and put a little bit of information about each one beside it, what I like or what I don't like. And uh, then I'll show you how to export this. I'm going to stop recording now and then come back after I've completed this section. Bottom section of this uh, mood board. And you can see I added four clip art images. Actually, this is kind of looks like clip art too. And two photographs. I wrote a little bit about each one. I said uh, I like the addition of a complementary color to my analogous color scheme, talking about blue and orange complements. I said each of the graphics has things that I like too. I like the symbolic look of this one. I like these sweeping lines down here, but I don't like this gradient. I like this lightning bolt, but I don't like these boxy sun rays. And I like the whole look of this graphic, the way it's got lines around each shape and the way instead of using a gradient, they use two hard shapes with some tints. I like all of these ideas. I like the idea of having a big image in the background. But if I can't find a royalty free photo, I might have to build something. And that's what I talked about. So just a reminder, um, in the view menu, I can choose normal and that way I'll see the guides that keep me inside my half inch margin. You can see these three images don't quite meet the bottom margin so I'm just going to select them all and move them down. I like to keep my mood board very uh, organized and compact. As long as I have the selection tool chosen I can type the W key to look back and forth without guides and without frame edges or with them. So just to make sure my mood board looks the way I want it to look. And now the way to save and export this. Again, I've already saved it once, but you'll choose save as. I named it project one mood board. I just saved it to my desktop for now. I'm replacing my last version. And now there is something we can choose that's called Publish Online. When you choose that, it's going to generate a link for you. So it's working in the background now. Here it comes. And I'm going to just choose Publish New Document. If you were doing this again, you might choose Update Existing Document. It's only one page, so that's all you have to do. And when you click Publish, it begins to generate a link in the background. In a minute you'll see a window showing that progress right there and it's uploading it to my Creative Cloud document, my Creative Cloud library. I don't need to view it. I can see it right here. But I am going to copy that link. And now that the link is copied, just so you know, that is what you want to paste into the discussion. I'm going to create a text frame and just copy it so you can see. That link right there, that's what you will post into your discussion board at the bottom of your master study discussion. So that's one thing I'm asking you to post on the discussion board. The other thing I'd like you to post is a JPEG. 
So I'm going to choose now File Export. And from this menu, you'll choose JPEG. I'm going to leave the name the same because it'll put the JPEG extension on it. I'm going to make it high, but 72 PPI. And export. It'll put it right on my desktop next to uh, the InDesign document. So it's the JPEG and this link right here that I would like for you to post on the Master Study Discussion Board. Thanks. This was a great workshop.